Well, it's Thursday. It is Thursday. We're lucky we made it today, John. We have been just overwhelmed this week. It's been a crazy week. Overwhelmed with stuff. But it's been a great week because last weekend we had Rally Day, which in spite of the rain was fantastic. Awesome. We had a ton of people in worship. We had more people in small groups and in kids club and in youth group on a Sunday morning than we have had since well before COVID. So yep. great, great, great to see everybody. And in spite of the rain, and in spite of not being able to do the bouncy house, we had a blast. Oh yeah, social hall was packed. Was the packed. Food was great. Kids had a blast. A lot of thanks to the fellowship team. Yep. Um, Huge thing. We know. We know. We were gearing you guys up to go outside, and you were hanging on with us. Thank you for shifting at the last minute. That's how it's going to roll uh, at times. And thank you for Christian Education Team for everything you guys did yep. just to make that a success. And then yesterday, like that was a great weekend. Then yesterday, we took a busload of St. Philip's people and um, a, a handful of folks from Unity Church down to Washington, D.C. for uh, a trip to the um, uh, National Museum of African American History. I mean, I had been there before, but um, if you haven't been there, worth a trip. Worth a trip. Really great time. I think everybody enjoyed it. We're going to have a dinner coming up with Unity where we awesome. get to kind of debrief on that. So really a busy week, John, yeah. but a great week. Um, more happening this week. Yeah, a couple of things happening on Saturday and Sunday. One of them, uh, Saturday is the LCS Run Walk. Uh, it's going to be happening up at Concordia Lutheran Church. It starts at 9 o'clock. Um, we've got a couple people from St. Philip's who are, are running. Um, you can see Amanda DeWeese uh, about you know, either supporting the team or joining the team. You don't have to run. You can walk. Yes. You can walk. Yep. It's just three miles. And just, you know, ton of fun afterwards. They're having a party afterwards with food, games. It's going to be a great Saturday morning. Um, Sunday morning, we have our first Lunch and Learn of the year. Uh, we're going to be welcoming Pastor Gordon Simmons, who is... Um, works for the State Public Policy Office here in Delaware for the Lutheran Church. He's going to be talking about some of the things that are going on um, currently in legislation and maybe some things that uh, Lutheran churches can kind of get behind. So uh, that's going to happen right after the 1030 church service. Food's going to be provided. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex, um, so you can sign up to be a part. Uh, we can also email Susan Mack or you can email me. And we'll get you added to the sign-up list. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, continuing that good energy from Rally Day yeah. into this weekend, too. A lot of things going on. A lot of fun things happening. So, all right. Um, so, uh, John, on Sunday, you preached from uh, the Gospel, Luke 15, mm -hmm. 1 to 10. A little bit of some familiar stories there for folks. Uh, so, now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. John, you preached on this. I don't know if you want to launch in and just sure. kind of take us where we can kind of build off of where you uh, where you kind of went. Yeah. So I um, kind of the the big piece of this, um, and this will kind of kick off some later. Um, this is for, I, I have yes. to hang with this this to... weekend for the parable I'm doing. Right. So this sort of starts what what becomes a really long lecture in Luke's gospel, and. It starts with, you know, all these people are around Jesus, and the Pharisees and scribes start pointing the finger going, why are these people here? Yeah, the, those phrases, John, now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming here to listen to him, and the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. 
there's a, I think the way you talk about it, this is a key right. for us, right? Right. This is, this colors, that statement colors a lot of what comes after this. Mm -hmm. I think there's a total of either five or six parables that Jesus tells based off of just that one sentence right. of who is this person that welcomes these people? Why are they here? What is that? What do we know about Jesus because he welcomes these people? And you could probably even, it's too bad that like they didn't like have a, a heading to remind us in the Bible each time that we're still in this part where they're grumbling and saying, this man welcomes, you know, sinners and eats with them. You know, yep. because you could have done that. You, they did that right before the sheep. They could have done it right before the coin. They could do it right, right before the unforgiving servant that I have this weekend. Over yeah. and over and over. Let's keep reminding you what this is right. about. Right. Just keep going back and back and back. Right. So, um, so you have that conversation of why are these people here, and then Jesus tells these parables about lost things, you know, lost sheep, lost coins, and and really when you get into it, it's not so much a conversation about you know why are they here. Not you know Jesus saying you know oh well you know they deserve to be fed. It becomes a conversation about who God is in this moment, where you sort of take that sentence at the beginning of you know the Pharisees and scribes are grumbling, and you take the sentence at the end of you know there's more rejoicing in heaven over you know one repentant sinner than all the righteous people in heaven, where you get that understanding of God celebrates when we come back. God actively goes out and searches for the people who are lost, who are broken, who are sinful. And when God finds them, there's rejoicing in heaven. That that's how much we mean to God, no matter how far we go, no matter how down and dark we think life is, God's going to keep searching and searching and searching and when God always finds us, God will always rejoice. Yeah. I think one of the, the best understandings I ever heard of this, John, was um, we, we had some guests come to our synod I don't know, 10, 12 years ago or so, and uh, they were from Tanzania. Hmm. And... Um, and I remember we were in a Bible study. I was in a Bible study with them. It's maybe 10 of us. And um, we read that parable. We read the first one, the mm -hmm. one of the lost sheep. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember one of our Tanzanian guests just sitting there saying, oh, how very, very sad. How very, very sad. And, and we looked at them and said, sad that the one was lost and very sad for for him and they said no no how very very sad for the community that they are not complete and it was an interesting turnaround on that right, right. because you went down the road um that we probably would do in america right, right. the individual individuality and everything um and it's not surprising that in a place that is um, very much uh, ground in villages and community life, that these people from Tanzania would look at how sad this is for the community. And when what they explained is that they said, you know, when the one is lost, the community is not whole. And and I think there's something maybe to be gained from that understanding as well, not just that Jesus goes and finds. But that Jesus's desire is for that one to come back mm -hmm. because it's only then that the community is whole and that's what the community is lacking I think um, when I keep when I keep running with it gosh I got an eyelash in my eye or something um, that's what the community is lacking when that one is gone um, and it's what it's lacking that Jesus is pointing out to the scribes and the Pharisees who don't want anything to do with these sinners and tax collectors Without them, our community is not whole. Right. And I think if we parlay that into where we are today, we have to ask ourselves, who are the people who are not present with us on a Sunday morning, 
in our lives, in the mainstream of what we do, because our community is not whole. And we deep down know that that's a problem. Whether or not we decide that it's a problem for us too is, is something that Jesus, I think, challenges us on. But the ability to, um, to know that we are not whole. Right. We are not whole when there is racial division. We are not whole when there is economic division. We are not whole when anyone there, um, because maybe they've had bad things happen in their lives, and so therefore they haven't acted like we have. They haven't been upstanding. Right. They had to serve time maybe in jail. Those people are not part of our community. Whether we like it or not, we are not whole without them. And I think that that's one of the, just the, the flip side of what you were talking about to, to, to play with. Yeah, and I think when you get into that, that line of thinking too, you start thinking about, all right, what are the blessings that we can be to those people and what are the blessings they have that we're missing out on? Mm -hmm. And we talk about, you know, the fullness of the kingdom coming. And I think the fullness, as Jesus is kind of pointing to here, is when everybody's at the table. You know, yes, things are good now, but think of how much better it will be when all are present, when all are welcome, when all are fed, when all are nourished. That's that's when mm -hmm. the kingdom truly comes in its fullest. Yeah. And I think and I think also, John, and maybe it's because I'm already a week ahead of all of us yeah. uh, as I've been working uh, through the week. Um, I think we better get ready for that because when we get this parable of um, the dishonest manager, which is coming up this weekend, right. you're going to look at that and say, my God, why is Jesus commending him? You know what I mean? Right. And you're going to struggle with it. And I think if you don't understand the fact that Jesus is trying to bring sinners back in, those are the ones who are lost right. in Jesus' parable. I don't, I don't know if we can fully say that, that you and I, John, are not necessarily the lost sheep and that our people are not the lost sheep. Because I think maybe that there are times that we are. Yeah. Right? But John John actually really helped me for this weekend, just so you guys know. When I listen to him, and I know our, our scripture texts right. are very close to one another, I'm listening to John because he's already done some work and some thinking about it. And so I like to stand on John's shoulders right. a little bit. I'm sure you do the same yeah, thing absolutely. when you follow me. Um, um, and so John bringing up that this is about... This fellow eats with sinners and welcomes them. That's who we're talking about. Right. Here. You know, it, it, it's about those who are excluded. And if you're not feeling excluded right now, it's probably not you. Yeah. And it's and it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, there there is some aspect of our life that we are excluded in. So it's both cutting edge of how are you living this out? How are you welcoming? But also good news. I mean, this is one of those really, truly law and gospel texts yeah. where you're going to feel that, ooh, I don't know if I like Jesus saying this. Mm -hmm. But then you start to sit there and think about it and go, oh, wait, there's that thing. Yeah. There's that thing where I'm not whole. Yeah. And that's the promise for me. Yeah, Because you know those sheep are all going... Going, man, there goes the shepherd again. Going after Barney because Barney's always getting lost. You know Barney's going to get but lost. But then right? there's that time when it was you. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you got your foot caught in the crag. Right. And it's that you know splinter in you know your neighbor versus the log in your own eye. Yeah. Of, all right. We're gonna. You know, it all comes for all of us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Pray us out, John. Sure. Gracious God, you send your Son into the world to gather all of us together into one body. 
And at times, we feel like gatekeepers, pushing people in and pushing people out. We do that because they think differently than we do, or they challenge us, or they don't look like we do, or they don't do things the way we would do them. But you keep reminding us that we are one body. That your son keeps reminding us that we are whole when all of us are seated at your banquet table. When all of us are welcome, when all of us are nourished by your spirit. Lord, help us to go do that work today and every day. Help us to be filled with your spirit to bring all people to this body you've called together. Remind us that we are whole because you are working in ways infinitely greater than we can ask or imagine to do that work, to make that kingdom come. And we pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. It is a beautiful day. Yep. Go outside. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye.